No jab, no job. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at this media release from the Small Business Organisations of Australia. Now, I'm a small business. I've never heard of this organisation. This type of thing, well, I keep thinking of Atlas Shrugged. I keep thinking that, you know, as one of my viewers keeps reminding me, I really need to sit down and finish that book because it feels like we're living we're living in that book right now with these type of organizations. So let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at what they're calling for. Cosboa notes today that one major learning learning lesson from the last six months is that we need to better anticipate the future that comes from the pandemic and prepare for all potential scenarios, including management of vaccinations and workplace impacts. Peter Strong, CEO of Cosboa, said today we must not only learn from the past six months we must also use the breadth of breadth breadth of experience and knowledge that exists across our business community and the wider community to prepare for the untested response to new problems the recent focus on managing vaccinations is a case in hand the council of small business organizations australia knows that in various jurisdictions, a person who catches COVID-19 is deemed to have done so in the workplace. This puts the employer and his or her family at a high risk of being fined or sued by employees and their families. It makes an employer, a family business, responsible for an outcome over which it has no control. We'll see. Can you find someone for that, for not providing a safe work environment or you know, creating an environment where someone could catch an illness? Could you find a business if you could prove that you caught the flu there, that you caught the cold there? See, this is the problem. This is the problem of this insidious, legalistic environment that we have in and uh, just a risk aversion, risk aversion, pat everyone up. You generate a generation of snowflakes that just expect the state and others to take care of them. What happened to resilience and gumption? Mr. Strong added, if and when a vaccine is developed and available, there will be great debate about whether it should be used or not. Anti-vaxxers and libertarians will have a field day. For workplaces, we must make sure that any rules do not impact upon business viability or the health of the business owner and the workers. We cannot, for example, make the employer responsible for the behavior of workers. Our experience so far is that there is a tendency for government and others to quickly blame the employer and demand that they be held accountable for anything and everything, including somebody being impacted by a pandemic. Well, he's right there. He's right there. It, it, the government does tend to expect employers to take a paternalistic role with their little workers you gotta pat them on the head and pay their taxes for them you know and and put some of their money aside because they're too dumb to save themselves so you've got to go put it in put it in super for them they couldn't transfer it themselves and you gotta you gotta do all that you know for the for, for little little people that need to be taken care of and yes i am intentionally being insulting there mr strong also added if the employer is to be held responsible, then the employer must have the right to refuse employment to people who have not taken the correct precautions and also stand down employees who act irresponsibly. Let's prepare now for what may or may not happen in the future of this pandemic and not wait until the problem occurs. So in essence, he wants businesses to have the right to stand down or refuse employment to people based on their correct precautions, which would include vaccination. There you go. No jab, no job. Now, honestly, fine. Let them do this. Let them impl let them implement this. But then let's also remove every other piece of anti-discrimination legislation we have in Australia. Let's let people fire people for anything. I've said I've said before in many videos, you need to make it easier to fire people, then more jobs will be created. You need to remove Remove the burden placed on small business by government, by the state. Just the threat of recourse, the threat of action for firing someone who's useless. 
And if you're one of the people going, oh, but then the, the businesses will abuse the probationary period or they'll just hire and fire, hire and fire. Well, then those businesses will suffer because it's not a smart way to do it. You want to get a good worker. You want to hold on to them and you want to train them up because then they get better and you get more returns. Often it takes months to get someone to the point where you can actually make some money off employing them. And if you haven't experienced that, maybe you're not in the right profession. Maybe you're the one that's always fired because maybe you're just not the right fit. You've got to give people three warnings. You've got to hold their hand. You've got to do all of this, 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 and this. So what happens? Businesses go stuff it all offshore. Someone will appreciate the work. But this isn't what they're calling for. This isn't what they're calling for. They're calling for the ability to fire people, to discriminate people against one particular position. And with, with you know, either the dirty, anti, or the kooky anti-vaxxers or the dirty libertarians. You know, how dare people want to want to have, you know, some modicum of control. They don't want the state to force them to do things. <laughs> it's just crazy. Government never does anything wrong. Government takes care of us. Government loves us. Government is your family. Double think, double good, plus plus. So what's this organization? Let's look at their history. Let's look at their history because I've, I've never heard of it. Anyone? Never have. They were founded in 77 and incorporated in 79 as a public com company limited by guarantee. Has a proud history of strong advocacy for small business issues, ranging from taxation and workplace relations through to competition law and retail tenancy. We were created by people who believed that small business needed a voice that was not only representative, representing big business as a result. The Council of Small Business Australia is now the country's peak body exclusively representing the interests of small businesses. I wonder if all the small business people agree with this. Are you in small business? Is he representing your views? Our goals are to promote and support the development of small businesses in Australia, advocate advancing the interests of small businesses in Australia, including through policy change and regulatory reform, foster an increased awareness and understanding of the role of small business in Australia amongst public servants and elected government officials, larger business, the media, and the general community. I mean, I like these ideas. They're important to consider. But here's the thing. I would rather, rather than proposing the ability to fire people over a specific thing, so because he's, you know, he, he wants to, to push advocate for this. What about you remove, you create legislation that removes the potential liability for employers uh, for employers if someone gets sick on your premises remove that liability from you why not i mean the problem is i'm a different demo you know who was it who wrote this is he here i can't see him i think it's peter strong i'm the different demo than peter my risk profile is much lower maybe, maybe that's clouding my opinion maybe it's clouding his so all of a sudden, this organization is advocating for this. We engage our members and provide opportunities for them to influence outcomes affecting their business and their industry. We act as a conduit for information from our members to government and other organizations and vice versa. A key activity for us is to facilitate introductions between member organizations and businesses with relevant customers, suppliers, service providers, and regulators. Communication is the foundation of any good relationship, and we endeavor to be an active conduit for information. We exist because small businesses don't have the time, the resources, and often the expertise that is required to be alerted to the myriad of legislative and regular, regulatory change that affects them on a, an ongoing basis. Our efforts are focused on providing accurate and timely input into decisions which will affect small business. Our members provide essential input to ensure the quality of our representation as well as the substance and credibility to back it up. Our relationship with government is critical to ensure we're aware of what's happening that might help or hinder business and equally to convey any new or emerging issues that need to be addressed to support small, the smaller business community. So I'll link to this if you want to look into it. I mean, nothing here that I have an issue with. But rather than no jab, no job, Let's just remove anti-discrimination legislation. What do you What do you reckon? Do you think Do you think that'll that, that'll everyone will be happy then? If you don't want to 
you know, hire anyone because of their political orientation, you can get rid of them. If you're worried someone's going to get knocked up, you can get rid of them. If you don't like, you know, someone's uh, political belief or religious relief, just get rid of them. Get rid of them all. And what do you think is going to happen? The businesses that are picky and, you know, have all these insane, that don't actually just base their decisions on merit, they're going to have a competitive disadvantage because they're not going to get the best people. And then what happens? The market sweeps them away. Or it should, if it weren't for all these insane interventions by the state. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions on the comments below. Are you a fan of this legislation? Are you not? Don't get me wrong. I, I am an advocate for vaccination. But I consider it similar to software. I wouldn't want to try the first version. I kind of let other people get all the bugs sorted out. Maybe I'm being overly cautious. Maybe that's just because of, you know, my risk profile is so insanely low with this. That's my bias. And that should be my choice to take. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Please like, share and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or KuCoin. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.